sorry, a different location physically, uh, particularly in this pandemic environment, um, the Wing feature really, really provides us a great vehicle to do that. So um, I am going to move quickly into some introductions and I will start with myself. But before I do, um, I want to call your attention. So you'll see we're talking about superheroes today. I don't know if we have any, any other Marvel fans. Maybe. Okay. So uh, we're huge Marvel fans in our house, but um, you hopefully will hear some theme of you know, kind of why I'm alluding to that you can be a superhero in working for Mercer Government or Government Human Services Consulting um, is the official name. Um, so as we move in, I, before we move in, I want to say one thing. So you get an opportunity today to hear from me. I'm the hiring manager for all of our positions. Um, and learn a little bit about our business, but more importantly, you get to hear from several of our analysts and consultants that have been where you are right now, um, it, fairly recently. And so you can hear their perspectives, get some career advice, get some um, you know day to day advice, um, all of those things. And so that's really helpful. So hopefully you can be prepared with questions to ask them because I know they're really excited to share their experiences with you. Um, but one other kind of super secret surprise benefit that you probably weren't aware of, um, by attending today, you are eligible to attend an invite-only special event. Um, it will be one-on-one -on -one with Shannon and I, and so we'll be providing some interview prep and many interviews. That process is going to fast track you through the interview process if you are interested in working with much your government. So that's a great way to kind of set yourself um, apart from the rest of the applicants and you know, kind of uh, get that initial um, interaction and guidance from the two of us through the process. So more information about that will be forthcoming via email after the session. So look forward to that. Um, okay, so let's get started with the, int the introduction. So I'll start with myself. Um, so fair warning, there's a lot of pictures here. The rest of the crew did not provide the onslaught of pictures like I did. Um, but, uh, you know, I, pre I did the presentation, so it was fun for me. Um, so as I mentioned, I am the National Business Recruiter, so I work alongside Shannon and Nicola and Lily um, in our campus team. I'm actually in the business, and I am the hiring manager for all of our positions, both intern and full-time nationally. Um, I am located in Phoenix, Arizona, so uh, yes, it's kind of hot here, um, although we're having a a relatively mild day at 104 uh, today, I think expected. So uh, I'm looking forward to be able to get outside a little bit. Um, so you can read some hobbies, but I'll talk about my fun facts real quick. Um, so I once jumped off a ski lift because I realized I've gotten on the wrong one going to the Black Diamond course. I was not a Black Diamond skier. So I was freaked out to go down that hill because I could fall. So somehow in my head, it made sense to jump off the ski lift um, and so I ended up breaking three bones, but I got a story to share about, you know, um, I was only 14, I, you know, so I, I, I didn't know any better, but anyway, so that's my kind of fun fact. Um, I try to share different ones at each one of these events, so that's my um, one for today. So I'm going to move to my panelists, and so I'm going to start with Christian Leach. Christian, can you take yourself off mute and introduce yourself? <clears throat> yeah, sadly, I don't have a cool story like that about the black diamond <laughs> jumping. You know, I can make You're one probably up. Probably smarter than me, Christian. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So my name is Christian. Um, I'm an actuarial consultant in Phoenix. Um, I went to Brigham Young University and I got my degree in actuarial science. Um, some of my hobbies are from the picture, it's hanging out with my family, and I have a baby girl due in about a month from now. So we're really excited. Um, yeah, I'm really into audiobooks. Actually, um, I've you know just been listening to audiobooks like, like all throughout like school, walking to, to and from campus. That kind of went, like what like kicked it off for me. And since then, I've gone through uh, so many audiobooks. Like like the 200 is just an estimate. Like I think I'm actually over that. Um, so yeah, so if you have any like book recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Or if you're looking for any, I can also give you many. Um, I'm also a big Arizona sports fan, so go Cardinals this year. Um, super excited for them. And yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Don't hold the, you know, sports is one of those topics we try not to talk too much about. So don't hold that against us if you're <laughs> not a Cardinals fan. Uh, we, we still can all get along. Yeah, there's, right. a lot of, there's a lot of sports diversity in uh, in Mercer, so. For sure, for sure. All right, next. 
Hi, my name is Kwong Don. Um, I've been with Mercer for almost two years now. Um, this November will mark my two-year journey here. Um, again, I work in the Mercer government sector with an actual financial group as a senior financial analyst. Um, you can kind of see here, my hobbies include spending time with family. Um, we just had a little one last year who is not a pandemic baby. Um, <laughs> he came before, you know, everything kind of went crazy. Um, and I am located in the Atlanta office. I went to Georgia State University. I majored in finance. And then one fun fact that's not kind of on this slide that I don't think I've ever mentioned is that my husband and I were in the same third grade class. Um, we met again in high school and started dating in ninth grade. And then we actually found out we were in the same third grade class our senior year of high school. And so we've been together ever since, but yeah, that's, that's um, kind of a fun fact that I like to share. That's fun, awesome. Thank you for sharing, thank you both. Okay, we've got two more folks. Let's start with Deisha in our Atlanta office. Hi everyone. My name is Deisha. Um, I work within the Mercer government sector as a senior informatics consultant. Um, I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I also went to Georgia State University. Go Panthers. Um, I got my bachelor's in clinical health informatics. Um, recently, I started back learning American Sign Language. Fun fact, I actually majored in um, American Sign Language first when I first got to Georgia State um, and changed my major, I think my junior year to informatics, so. That's very interesting. Megan, um, round us out here. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Megan. Um, I am an actuarial uh, associate within the government sector. Um, I'm based out of Minneapolis. Um, yeah, I've been with Mercer about three years now, just over. Um, yeah, I graduated from Michigan Tech in Michigan and with a bachelor's degree in mathematics with a concentration in actuarial science. Um, my free time, I like to do a lot of camping, hiking, anything outside. I love the winter, so skiing, snowboarding, any of that fun stuff. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. So Megan, you probably would not be happy living in Phoenix, uh, would be my guess. And you probably have not jumped off any of those chairlifts as you were, as you were going skiing. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. Uh, we want to, you know, we are kind of a work family. And so we want to share a little bit with you and, you know, we're people first. Um, and so hopefully that was um, interesting and helpful for you. Um, I actually really enjoyed it myself. I learned some new fun facts about uh, colleagues um, already. Okay, so now we're going to dive into briefly a little bit about our business. If you want to learn even more about the Mercer Government business, uh, Shannon did mention the YouTube channel. Um, there is a GHSC 101 session. I think it was also in uh, the homepage that you registered for this event at. There was a link to it. Um, so you can listen to a recording of one of my one-on-one session that goes into quite a bit more detail about what the job in, jobs entail, our company culture, all of that. So feel free to check that out um, in your free time. Um, so Mercer, so we are um, a global consulting leader. So I, I knew this in here just because for me, being part of an organization is you know, that's large, job stable, that's been around a long time, that's a proven leader in the industry, that's important to me for where I work. Um, so you're not gonna, you know, get anything better than Mercer. Um, it is 28,000 clients. We are a Fortune 2 company as part of our parent company, uh, Marshall McLennan. Um, we've been around for 70 years. Marshall McLennan itself, I think, is at 180. Um, somebody might correct me. Uh, we're definitely over the 150 mark now. Um, so that's a long time to be in the industry that we are in and be successful in the industry. So that means you're going to be working alongside proven leaders, proven life learners um, that will help you succeed and um, you'll be part of that. Um, so then let's kind of drill it down a little bit. So that was Mercer overall. We talked a little bit about Marshall and McClendon. Uh, the Mercer government group. Um, the cool thing about that is that now we're fairly small, 400 consultants across four offices. So it's sort of small firm within the big large firm. So you get that small company feel along with the big company benefits um, and big company you know, stability and all of that. 
Um, so we're a little different than what the rest, the whole rest of Mercer uh, does. We are within the health line of business and where we focus is with public entities, primarily state governments, and really helping them be better purchasers of healthcare. So in any state, their largest expenditure in their budget, um, it actually is healthcare. It actually is Medicaid in that particular state budget. So you think about all those you know, dollars and all those people that are very deserving of healthcare, um, how, do we, you know, how do we make sure that it's efficient, we're spending it wisely, but also really getting the best access and the best quality of care for those very deserving populations. So we really can come alongside our state clients and really help them get there. So um, you heard um, we have panelists from all of our offices except for DC. Um, we don't have, generally DC is our policy folks that work alongside the federal government to help determine a policy for Medicaid nationwide. Um, we do have an office in Atlanta um, we've got two folks on here from Atlanta. Minneapolis, Megan um, is from Minneapolis, and then um, I happen to be housed in Phoenix, although I'm a national resource. And then um, Christian is from Phoenix. So I'm not going to go into all of this. I hope that this slide, uh, you know, kind of gives you an idea, a little flavor of kind of who we are and just the stability that is Mercer government in addition to the broader Mercer. Um, we started in 1985, so we have been in business for 36 years. Um, we started with just one client, Arizona. Um, that's how we came to have an office in um, Phoenix. Um, and we only did actuarial rate setting for that. That was it. Um, we did that one thing. We did that one thing really well. Um, over the course of our 36 years, we've expanded that to a whole host of different products and product lines where we can really you know, look at clients holistically and all of their issues and all of their um, problems and challenges that they might have in the Medicaid program and really try to make the best solution possible rather than just looking at it through a very narrow specialty lens. Um, so we have experience in 44 states. We're 36 states right now, if memory serves. Um, as I mentioned, we do have um, over 400 staff across those four offices. Um, I'll just briefly point out 361 billion Medicaid bu budget dollars utilized for Medicaid and CHIP programs. In fact, I mentioned that's the largest line item in the state. So if you think about 361 billion, that's a lot of dollars that most of the government is impacting every single day. And then on the other side, not just dollars, these are actually people. So hence, we've seen kind of a little bit of a hint of why I talk about superheroes. So the work that we do literally does impact millions and millions of Americans every single day by giving them better quality to healthcare, better access to healthcare, um, making sure that those programs run efficiently. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on because I wanna make sure we have time for questions. Um, and again, if any of this you want me to expound on, feel free at the end of Q&A. Uh, hopefully you'll direct most of your things to our panelists, but I'm happy to answer a few questions. So I talked about kind of a holistic approach, um, and I don't mean, you know, by, uh, you know, I'm a big essential oils girl, I don't mean by getting out my essential oils and, and, and helping clients that holistically, but um, holistically meaning, you know, like in a total. So the positions that we have available today, um, right now on campus, um, actuarial and financial. Um, so I think uh, everybody but Deisha on the panel are in that particular sector, if you will, or department. Um, so we have actuarial intern and analyst positions, financial intern and analyst positions. And then we also have the informatics and data intern and analyst positions. That's where Deisha works. Um, policy and regulatory, those are generally the folks that are working in DC, policy related. Uh, we don't hire campus folks into that department. However, it's kind of cool by working in the actual financial sector, um, it is entirely possible if you have an interest in policy, you could be working on policy related projects. And um, so again, we all work together. We're not in little silos. And so there are a lot of opportunities to work and get experience in that policy. Um, and if that happens to be a long-term career aspiration for you, that certainly is an option. And we have our clinical and our operations um, sector as well, so with behavioral health, with clinical psychologists, social workers, um, you name it in that group that really helps. Obviously, mental health um, is a really key priority right now. Um, we're hearing a lot about it, particularly with the pandemic. Um, our folks are experts at this, and they can really help us through that process. Um, so then finally, but not last, um, we have a pharmacy sector. Um, we are looking for two interns in that particular sector. 
the job description is the same as the financial analyst um, or the financial intern. Um, they do similar roles, but they would be working in the pharmacy sector. Um, all right, so moving along, and I believe you will get, a, well, you're going to get a, a, a recording of this. You can certainly dig into in the recording and listen to go back to any of these slides if you're interested. Okay, so I want to quickly talk a little bit about office life. Obviously, we are still um, in our pandemic. Um, most of our offices are back uh, with limited capacity. So um, I actually was in earlier this week on Tuesday, um, which was nice uh, just to kind of get out of my home office and see some folks live. Um, so office life, the first thing, I'm not gonna highlight everything, um, but really you'll hear me if you talk any length of time to me about campus and you know, about our roles, you'll hear me talk about choose run adventure. So this is super key and frankly, one of the reasons why I stayed at Mercer 22 years. Yep, you heard that right. 22, um, 22 years. Um, and it's really the ability to, you know, come in when you start with us. Most of you probably have no idea about Medicaid coming in here. You don't know about healthcare. That's okay. Um, I didn't have anything when I started either. Um, you started the ground floor. You kind of learn about all those things. We train you, you develop, you get immersed in your teams and, and you have meetings with the clients and all of those things. Well, then you can kind of develop and figure out the kind of consultant you want to be. And so you really can kind of choose your own adventure. We're not cooking, you know, we're not churning out cookie cutter consultants. Um, the four people that we've got here, they're all in various roles, even if their titles are the same, they're specializing in different and new things, working on different kinds of projects. Um, and so you would have the exact same opportunity that all four of them have had as well. Um, two other things I want to highlight. First is the business resource groups. Think of these kind of like your school clubs, right? They're optional, but can be really, really, really helpful to participate and allow and enhance your experience. It'll also enhance your, your soft skills as well as allow you a much better engagement opportunity and interaction with other colleagues. So these are groups that, um, again, are optional, but that you can come together and uh, discuss similar topics um, with other folks. And really advance your skills. So we'll talk a little bit about them. There's a rising professionals. They'll do TED Talks. They'll do career pathing, how to advance your career. They'll do Toastmasters, you know, all sorts of things to really enhance how to enhance your career and just, you know, get better um, in the workplace. Um, there is Immersive Peers. Uh, that is community service um, business resource group. Um, and then there is uh, racial and ethnic diversity, pride, uh, women at Mercer. Um, and accessibilities, which really focuses on ways that we can be more accommodating and um, inclusive of folks that might have different kinds of um, accessible challenges. Like, um, I think I forgot to do it here. So now this is um, embarrassing, but I'm going to just call myself out on it. Um, often with my Zoom, I try to do closed captioning um, with my Zooms. So you can turn it off with you if it's annoying. But for those people that that might really help, um, they have closed captioning and they can read that along if they can't hear as well um, in that. So we'll make sure we do that on our next, um, our next uh, Zoom call. Um, but it's kind of a fun tip for you um, if you're interested. Um, leadership Open Office Hours is the last one I'm going to mention. So one of the things that I love about Mercer is we're kind of a flat structure. Um, even an intern, an analyst, you're fresh out of college, you need to be here a month. You will have access to partners, principals and partners and experienced people. You'll be working alongside them day to day. And then you'll have access to them just to chit chat, uh, personal work related, get advice, mentoring, all of those things. Well, now in this pandemic, it's been kind of difficult to notice when a partner might have the door open and they're not on a call, right? Because you can't really see where they are all the time. So something fun that all of our offices and the national we've done is we've created open office hours. So leadership has just blocked up their calendar. They've sent out an invitation to everybody. It's optional. Um, I join occasionally. I don't join all the time. But it's just a fun time just to pop in, talk personal things, get to know them, what they like to do for hobbies, who they are as a person, but also really get career advice or mentoring or, you know, I've got a client call next week. I'm really nervous because I think they're going to throw me a winger. Do you have any tips on how I can be prepared? they're there for you. And so I think that's a really amazing thing that Mercer government has done to really enhance um, the COVID pandemic work from home um, experience and help allow a little bit of engagement. So um, we are going to move now into, I know I went through super quick, but I want to make sure that we devote most of the time to you and that we talk about specifically what you want to talk about. 
So hopefully you came prepared or you're thinking through kind of what questions you would like to know from our panelists. So I am going to ask our panelists to be ready. Um, and uh, we are going to, as, as Shannon said, we are going to open it up. Um, you can go ahead and just take yourself off mute and ask a question. Um, if you would like, you can use the hand raise function. Um, and Shannon will help me um, help me uh, do that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can actually see a little bit more of the gallery. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. Oh, there's your smiling faces. Um, perfect. So um, who's going to be brave enough to be first and ask a question? You can ask it specifically to one of our panelists if you heard something that um, resonated with you, or you can do an open-ended and our panelists will take turns um, answering the questions. I have a question. Perfect, Jada. And uh, that's a great thing. Can you, when you do your question, can you just uh, say your name, please? Just, it'll help me a little bit. Uh, Jada. Oh, of course. Hello, everybody. My name is Jada Marshall. Um, I am a senior here at Purview a and University. I'm a health major. Um, I have quite a few questions. My first question would be, how are you all experience um, with this company, especially during COVID? Like, did you feel comfortable? Do you feel like it catered to your needs? Or do you feel like your back was kind of against the wall a little bit? So like, how how comfortable do you feel with the company? And, you know, do you, on like, of course you enjoy it because you're still here, but like, do you wake up every day and you're like, okay, I, I love what I do? It's a great question, Jada. And I'm so glad that you asked it. Uh, I have tons of thoughts, but I would love my panelists to give their thoughts. Uh, so, Deisha, yes, I you take yourself off mute. I'm going to call on you. <laughs> yes, uh, very great question. I personally love the way that the company Mercer um, handled the pandemic. Um, our health and comfortability was their first concern the whole way through, still is um, to this day. Um, they was quick on their feet and um, getting everybody set up remotely by getting you extra monitors and anything that you needed to be comfortable at home. Their flexibility was amazing. So if you did happen to get sick, that the time off or sick time or anything wasn't a concern. Your, the concern was getting healthy. Um, the concern was to make sure that you were there with your family and stay out of harm's way. So um, yeah, so to this day, I can say that the company did a great job with responding to the pandemic and still is. Thanks, Jaisha. Anybody else have any thoughts that they want to add? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that completely. Yeah, the company is great about like, you know, the messaging and making sure that like, you know, like even, even if like, you know, there were points at which the pandemic was, you know, coming off of its curve, you know, and, and where there were discussions about going back to the office, but even then, you know, before like Delta, um, the messaging was always like, you know, we're not going to make you do anything that you feel uncomfortable with. So, and, and that's what I really appreciated a lot. Yeah, great question. Uh, um, okay, uh, Jada, I know you had a couple more questions, but I'm gonna, we've got a lot of hand raised. So uh, can we put a pin in your next question? Would you mind doing that? Yes, ma'am, go ahead, of course. Don't worry. <laughs> I've written you down, so we'll make sure we get those questions answered, I promise. Um, um, I'm gonna just top left for me, for, so I, Jacob Keller, um, I'm just gonna call on you. Yep, that's my name, Jacob Keller. I'm a senior at Brandeis University in Massachusetts. Uh, I'd love to hear more about work-life balance at Mercer and if it varies by different roles. Great question. Yes, Stacey, I can take that. Um, so hi, Jacob, great question. So work life balance, it really kind of depends on the time of the year. Um, typically we have a really busy season and sometimes you may be on two client teams and sometimes your um, client work may overlap with each other. And so I would say typically around like March through August um, is our busy season. There will be times where, you know, you have to put in more hours, but again, there's also times um, where, where the off cycle season, you've got more time um, to have like a work-life balance, but um, yeah, it just all depends on like um, the, the rate cycle season and um, obviously we have to get our work done and because um, the client goes first, so. I would add just a little editorial comment on that. 
Um, the busy season varies client by client. So it depends yeah. on the, the cycle of your particular client. So for, for her, it was March through August. Um, and, and even in that, you'll see, you know, yes, the busy season, but you'll still see these kind of, you know, kind of smaller bumps in, in your business for sure. Uh, anybody else have any other insights on that question before we move on? Sure. Um, and actually, my busy season with my teams ends up being kind of the opposite. It's more of October to March. So they kind of, um, they can yeah. offset. Yeah, they can offset if you have different teams. But yeah, I would agree. Um, there are definitely busy times when everybody's pitching in and working a little bit over. Um, but then there's also times where there's that flexibility of, oh, I don't have too much going on today. I can head out a little early or um, yeah, something like that. So I think another thing is it's kind of up to you too to to advocate for yourself. Um, so people aren't gonna know if you're crazy busy unless you tell them. Um, and I I found that if you communicate to them like any concerns like that, um, your team, my teams have all been really great about um, like shifting responsibilities around to people who aren't as busy and, and stuff like that. So it's kind of also on you to, to advocate for yourself and, and let people know. Great. Um, so Jacob, we actually get this question a lot. Um, you know, folks have this idea of management consulting being, you know, this insane, you know, you're working, you know, 24 seven, um, you know, definitely not the experience you're gonna have at Mercer Government. Um, I will also say our analysts come in and they get overtime, which is unusual in the consulting world, um, which allows you to really kind of drive um, and again, kind of decide how much overtime everybody works some, but you know, there are folks that really want to work a ton and it's folks that want to work a little less. Um, I'll give one personal anecdote. I'm actually a mom and she saw, and I didn't, I wasn't married, didn't have kids when I started most of 20 years ago. Um, I was at every single field trip as a mom chaperone. I was part of the TA. I was in the copy pool. I did all of those things as well as have, have some other life that was outside of being a mom. So, you know, you can adjust just about communicating, Megan kind of alluded to that communicating and just working your schedule around. Um, I'd work after we would go to bed, you know, I'd clean up a little bit and you know, uh, things that were left over from the day and really be able to balance it all um, and still be a high performer and, you know, successful in that career. So, all right, I'm going to uh, go to James Johnson. Again, it's just whoever is kind of in my top left um, now, um, James. Thank you, Stacy. Hey, everyone. This is James Johnson. I'm a senior graduating this December from UT Arlington with a degree in uh, undergraduate degree in business management. Uh, as Shannon highlighted in the chat, this is my fourth panel for this week. Um, I've really enjoyed them, especially how everybody uh, makes the work-life balance a focus, as well as everybody just being so friendly and supportive. Those are really what I'm looking for in organization. Um, as far as your area is, con is concerned, what kind of clientele do you guys usually work with? Is it state local governments or is it like government funded um, organizations such as universities or government sponsored companies kind of like Lockheed Martin, things like that? Yeah, so I can speak to this a little bit. Um, so we work directly with like the state health departments on their Medicaid programs. So like, for example, I work with the state of North Carolina um, and also the state or Washington DC, the district. Um, so yeah, more directly with the, with the states. Sometimes we'll work with the federal government as well, but generally our clientele are uh, state governments specifically. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Ryan Bender. Um, it's your turn. Hi, I'm Ryan. Uh, I want to apologize if I interrupted Shannon, I think, earlier with my hi in the beginning. <laughs> I My computer was muted, so I kind of panicked. I saw a bunch of faces looking at me, and I didn't know. You know I thought I was breaking the silence, but I guess I wasn't. So <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm a senior at ASU, Arizona State University. Um, I'm studying accounting. And I guess I just, my, my one question would be for anyone, um, do you think the work that you guys do is making the world a better place? And if so, can you elaborate on how it is making the world a better place? Great question. Yep, and Ryan, I can take that. Um, so recently, um, specifically the Pennsylvania State, um, 
they extended like postpartum coverage for women. So um, usually women, when, once they give birth, they have postpartum care up to two months. But with the um, state government, they wanted to extend that to 12 months. And so I would definitely um, say that the work that we do impacts a lot of people. It helps a lot of people, definitely people who are disabled, pregnant, um, or medically, um, medically ill and disabled. So yes, I would, I would say our work definitely makes an impact. Okay. Um, Ryan, since you're also here in Arizona, I know I uh, met you at ASU. Um, I'll give you a local example. So I was listening to KTAR um, in the news. I like their traffic report. I was going into the office on Tuesday and they actually were talking about how um, as a benefit of Medicaid program access in Arizona, they were providing free mental health care to any public school student from kindergarten on up through high school. Um, you did not have to be a Medicaid eligible person. So I've never been on Medicaid or my son's not on Medicaid, he's on Mercer's health plan, but he can actually go at his high school and get free mental health care um, through the Medicaid program. So if that's not making an impact, I don't know what it is. So, and that's a great real life example of the school we open to you. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, awesome. Thank and, you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Shaitana? Um, I, I'm so sorry. Help me say your name. Yeah, hi, Cece. So my name is Chetan Kumar. Yeah, so I'm a graduate student at American University and pursuing my master's in data science. It's been a great experience working over there. So I just had a quick question, like what kind of uh, projects do we work in informatics and data field of merger? And what are the opportunities, like internship opportunities and what kind of roles can we look into? Great question, Deisha, that's all you. I know, I know. Um, great question. So to your first question, what type of, what type of um, work do we do? We basically, yeah, right. Right, yeah. we basically work with Medicaid data. So we receive um, raw data files from our state government. Um, we take the, that data, we load it, um, we manipulate it, we analyze it um, for different projects. So let's say our sector partners, um, actuarial or pharmacy is looking to um, expand postpartum coverage as we were speaking to earlier, right? So we would um, go through the data and figure out how to identify postpartum in the claims, right? And then we would say, okay, this is how we identify um, this is what the state is trying to do. So we would give them a time period or a time span of data to say, if you're, if you're wanting to expand coverage 12 months, we'll give you this year of data plus another, another year. And we will put a flag on the data to say, so instead of cutting off their coverage this month and this year, you will actually cut it off here. And this is the financial impact of that. Um, so that's just an example of things that we do, but it's a lot of um, manipulating the data um, um, and working with our sector partners to get um, the needs of the state, basically. Um, and we do have intern opportunities, internship opportunities that I believe open up every summer. Stacy, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Um, so those opportunities are there. They're very helpful. We treat it like real life experiences. So with our interns, we put them on teams, they attend meetings, they, um, they have the opportunity to play with the data, attend meetings with um, the state governments, with our sector partners. So they really get a feel of the day to day of of what we do. Yes, uh, definitely uh, for informatics, there are intern positions available in Atlanta and Phoenix. Um, so uh, for those two offices, for the other uh, sectors, we have internship opportunities in Minneapolis, Atlanta, and, uh, and Phoenix as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking that. You're welcome. Charlotte, uh, Charlotte, I can't see your last name. Um, Morelli. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Charlotte Morelli. I'm a senior at Tulane University. I'm graduating this December and I'm studying economics and psychology. 
So I'm curious in regards to the different areas um, within government, so informatics, policy, and pharmacy. I'm wondering if these different groups end up having any overlap on the work they're doing and if they collaborate and share information. Short answer is yes, but I'm going to see if our panelists, have you been on any of those kind of um, engagements and would like to share an experience? Um, I can I can share an experience. Um, so I work on um, Louisiana and the District of Columbia. Um, and so we do pharmacy efficiencies every year and we work directly with our pharmacy team. So what they do is produce data requests of different efficiencies the state would like to see. Um, and we would work with them to get the data in a, in a good spot to um, basically produce those, those data tables and those metrics for the state. Um, we work directly with actuarial, 95% of the time um, we're hands-on with actuarial to get what the state needs data-wise. So I would say the overlap is every day you'll be working with a different sector partner. That's kind of teamwork is really what drives your day-to-day. -day. I'd also just quickly add, um, that's one of the things I think is super cool about being an analyst and of course, beginning your career at Mercer is that you'll work alongside, you'll get opportunities to interact with a clinical psychologist one day, a pharmacist the next day, and then you know an actuary the following day. So you're going to be surrounded by folks with different specialties, perhaps than yours, and you get to learn and interact and and uh, you know be sharpened um, by that experience. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, awesome. I ask a follow up question. I don't want to monopolize. Um, sure. I sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so within government, I'm wondering if you guys do any work that pertains to disaster relief. Um, I'm in Louisiana and in light of Hurricane Ida, um, I'm just wondering if anything with um, pharmaceutical industry um, policy, if you guys have any hands on work with that. Wow, and I love it when I kind of get stumped and I don't know the answer. Um, I, and so, uh, to be honest, I'm not aware of any, but uh, Deisha, you work in Louisiana and I, I think there's a few other folks. Um, are you aware, aware of anything like that? Um, no, we don't do any disaster relief. As of right now, I, I'm going to say no. Um, maybe in the future, um, there could be a request that comes down the line that will be specific with that. Um, but right now, I think our main focus is uh, COVID-19 analysis and getting that data um, in and figuring out the impact of that for our health plans. So if, if the state comes to us and asks us to work on something, then as you know, as as consultants, um, you know, we certainly will. Um, but yeah, that's a great point, Jaysha. COVID has been um, because we are so uh, such specialists and such subject matter experts in that particular area. Um, I think it has um, really, you know, kind of taken over most of the extra ad hoc type chat, uh, work. Um, but that's a great question. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, my uh, campus partners, do you see other ones? Or Shannon, do we have some questions in chat? We do have some questions. Um, so and Jada, I have not forgotten about you, by the way. J Jada's asked her question, and I think Christian's been awesome with answering questions here. Thank you so much, Christian, for that. Um, so Brandon does have a question, Bullard, um, does each sub-discipline have a specific area or are all opportunities split even between the four locations? For example, informatics in Phoenix, actuarial in, in Minneapolis. Great, thank you for the four example. I wasn't 100% sure which way we should go with the answer, but that cleared it up. Uh, no. job, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, generally, generally um, we have all disciplines in most offices. You are not, um, the only exception as you might have heard, I mentioned we don't have an internship opportunity for informatics in Minneapolis. And that's just at the moment, I don't have enough analysts that you would have a really strong informatics support system there locally. Um, the majority of our informatics are Phoenix and, uh, and Atlanta. Um, Full-time is available to come in Minneapolis and just hired somebody there um, as an analyst here recently, um, and she's fantastic. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so generally speaking, um, so we have all of our positions. We don't hire analysts in, in DC, as I mentioned, but yes, they're all everywhere. 
Um, and here's the other thing um, that might be a follow-up question, Brandon, is that just because you're in, um, you might've figured this out, just because you're in Atlanta, doesn't mean that that's the, you're working on the state of Georgia or only working on that particular state. Um, your location is not necessarily indicative of the clients you're going to work on. Um, we try to work cross office. We have cross office teams so that you're always interacting with a large group and a variety of experiences and backgrounds. So hopefully that helped, Brandon. Yeah, thank you. That was a oh, super perfect. thorough answer. Great. Um, any other questions, Shannon? And I have one more before someone else has their hand raised. Um, I know Christian answered this, but I think it's it's a big question to kind of include and just get some feedback on, especially with the DNI diversity and inclusion efforts that are going around with various social social issues that may be coming up. So the question is from Tatiana Valentine: How does Mercer, aside from the official statements online, ensure that hiring is diverse and inclusive? So I thought that would be great for us to kind of highlight or, or discuss. Um, so that's probably my wheelhouse um, and, and best in that. Um, so this is a great example of how we do that. Um, so we try not to limit ourselves to you know, one specific school or two specific schools. Um, we really try to pass a very broad net. Um, and, and I'm really sorry. Um, I don't know if you can hear it sounds like a pit bull bite is happening outside my door. Uh, my dogs are, are going crazy and not happy with the closed office door today. So ignore that. Um, but um, so we certainly do that. Um, we also have been very intentional about making sure that we are including um, very specific schools that do have diverse populations. Um, but you know, diversity actually goes even broader than ethnicity, right? And so as a consulting firm, it is critical that you know one team, let's say you know uh, Louisiana, we've heard a couple of those today, so is not uh, comprised of people all from the same even school or the same backgrounds, right? So we want different genders, we want different background experiences, we want um, different ethnicities, we want different hobbies and interests, personalities, and all of those things combined in a in a room as we're problem solving and working with our clients on these very complex problems, because if it was easy, right, they wouldn't hire us, they would just figure it out. So these are really hard, complex problems that we're trying to solve. And so we all get to work together and bring in a whole authentic selves to work to really solve those problems. Um, we wouldn't be able to be successful as a consulting firm. We wouldn't have the growth that we're demonstrating if we didn't have a really diverse population um, along those lines. So hopefully that helped. Um, our university partners might be able to give a little specific uh, more on um, you know, kind of on the recruiting logistics side of things too. And that's all the questions I had for you. Now we can turn over to Nicole that she might okay. be our last question for the session. Hi, I'm Nicole. Um, I'm a recent graduate from UC Irvine. And my question is for you guys um, who have worked on projects, what project for you was like the most memorable? Like, what did you do? What were the impacts on the communities that it benefited? And just like, what were like the beginning and end results? Great question. Who'd like to take that one? Oh uh, yeah, I can speak to this a little bit. So, um... In the state of New Jersey, um, this like they have, I think, through like just a national survey, identified that they, they have a, a large need for um, just you know behavioral health, um, and and so that was that was a place where the state wanted to expand coverage and care for those that needed um, you know more like mental health and uh, treatment options, and so I was able to be on a small team that helped to consult the state and looking at. Um, you know, options for expansion of those services, and then also to, um, you know, help price them, especially. And that's where we, you know, kind of like, you know, bring like the actual like true dollars to it. Um, and then, you know, being able to like have, you know, small discussions with them um, that lead to, you know, people actually receiving services that they need. Um, and yeah, and be able to expand that coverage so that, you know, more people can receive um, those treatment options that they need. So I, I see that as like a very big impact that, you know, I had, like my team had, you know, especially, you know, towards those that, that live in the state of New Jersey, so. Great. Thank you. It was like really great hearing about like people who are usually kind of overlooked in society kind of getting better benefits like by their government.
Yeah, and that's I think that's one of the main things about um, being working with Medicaid, especially, is that you know it, it targets those that you know um, you know have like you know disabilities and and you know who are you know at different points in life that that especially need that care um, more than at, at any other like time in their life. So. Um, great. So I actually want to revisit the last DEI question or the diverse population. I want to add one thing that I can't believe I forgot. Um, I also want to mention, so I'm actually part of Mercer's uh, DEI task force. Um, I hold the title of relationship manager. So I manage the partnerships that we've strategically drawn and made um, to help us with diversity both within Mercer as well as in our communities. Um, and so one thing I want to highlight that I am super excited and proud of is that one of the things we've talked about in our very technical type role is that often it is hard to find diverse populations that are folks that have decided to be an actuary or, you know, a data analyst or, um, you know, whatever the technical type roles that we're doing. So we decided to put our, you know, money and time where our mouth is, and we partnered with a company in Atlanta. Um, called 21st Century Leaders. Um, if you check my link out, LinkedIn, I'm connected with them. They're amazing. Um, they should partner with high school students um, that are a diverse population or um, challenged um, in a variety of ways. <clears throat> and they really help them with career advice and coaching and leadership skills um, and really partnering them with employers to help them be successful and you know, find their ideal career. Um, we've already made tremendous strides already as a result of our partnership. And so uh, we actually have an intern in Atlanta this coming summer um, who was an alumni of 21st Century Leaders. So it's already kind of some fruits of that process um, that we invest in, in now, and it has long-term benefits to increase the diversity of, of both Mercer as well as our community as well. So hopefully that helps. I know that was Tatiana's um, original question, but um, some of you, hopefully that was helpful for a broader. Um, okay, any other questions? If not, I have a couple of questions to post to our group. Uh, we've got a few more minutes, so uh, feel free to use them while we're here. All right, I'm gonna ask each one of our panelists while you're thinking if you have any final questions. For their best career advice, um, if, if they were in your shoes, what is, what's the best career advice that they could give you? I am going to start with Christian. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is um, like, just be excited. Like, you know, people can tell like when you're happy to be somewhere and, and, and when you're absolutely like not happy to be there at all. And so just like, you know, being friendly, smiling, being happy, being personable, like, like trying to slip in a joke every now and then is like, you know, really helpful, especially in Zoom meetings where like we don't see each other face to face and we can't have those conversations walking between our desks. Um, another piece of advice I'd give is, you know, just like taking responsibility for something without being asked, you know, if someone like throws out an opportunity, like just snatch it, you know, because the more opportunities you grab, like the more important you become. Um, and lastly, is to, uh, especially a lot of you are in school, it's just to treat you know, every professor, as if your professor is your client, um, is a great way to prepare yourself for, you know, a, a, a true, like, you know, consulting position. So, great, um, and then, great, you know, great, yeah. great career advice. Um, yeah. Megan, how about you next? Sure. Um, I guess I would say be open to opportunities. Um, I think sometimes myself, like I get focused on something I think I want to do. Um, and you miss out on all of these other things, like different applications, different projects. Um, and it's hard to know what you're going to enjoy doing um, and who you're going to enjoy working with until you try them. Um, so I think my favorite thing within this job is just how many different types of projects I've gotten to work on and gotten to see. And now I know more what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy and that kind of thing. I would put a big exclamation point on that career advice, um, maybe even two or three. Um, that's That would be my career advice as well, um, in that just be open to things. I would say a lot of the projects I've worked on at Mercer over my course of my career that I thought I would like, I didn't love as much. And the things that I thought I wouldn't like ended up being some of the things that I most enjoyed. So be open um, to a variety of things. It just makes you a better, well-rounded consultant. Um, okay. Um, so my career advice would be to just um, never be afraid to ask any questions. 
Um, I know when I first started at Mercer, I was more of like an introvert because that's just how my previous company was. I didn't get a lot of inter interactions with my coworkers, but coming to Mercer, I was able to interact with people, um, drive um, presentations and just really develop my communication skills. Um, it's on, yeah, don't ever be afraid to ask any questions. And with that, don't be afraid to do things that are new, um, that make you feel uncomfortable. Um, it'll, it'll teach you a lot of things. Um, again, communication skills. I think if you asked me back then, last year to do this career panel, I might have said no, just being nervous and all. But definitely, yeah, do things that are uncomfortable and, and just do things that are new. Love it. Um, and last but not least, Deisha. Yes. Um, so my advice would be to, um, it's kind of piggybacking off of everyone else's, but use every job or um, class or organization that you're part of as an opportunity to learn something new. Keep an open mind. Um, you may find that you really enjoy something that you never imagined that you would. Um, like I said in the beginning, I started Georgia State as a sign language major. Um, my my advisor told me to switch over <laughs> um, and I did and I love data and now this is my career and now I'm into my career and I'm learning that I like project management so now I'm I'm venturing into that and seeing where that's going to take me um, so just be open to learn something new every day um, make that a goal every day that you wake up um, also Every person that you meet is a potential door to a new opportunity, personally or professionally. So that's what your professor, your whatever organization you're in, in school or your current job. Don't burn any bridges, build good bridges, even, even if it's a just for now job or class, um, because you never know how they'll weave into, your lar into the larger picture of your life. So... That's very, very insightful on all of the, all of you. Um, I hope that um, you guys can take those little nuggets and, you know, kind of uh, put them in your toolkit. Um, we probably have time for one more question. I will say I did put my contact information in the beginning of the chat. Um, I love talking to students, um, so feel free to uh, send me an email. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Feel free to send extra messages, questions, um, or just be a connection. Again, building your Network is another kind of way to kind of build and kickstart your career. Any final question before we sign off? I guess I have a question for you, Stacy. Can you tell us more about the next opportunity that's coming up to meet with you or to learn more, expedite the, the process to really be considered for these opportunities? Yeah, great. So our positions are posted on Handshake. You can go out there and find those positions now. They all have the commercial government in the title. Um, but um, so you can certainly do that. Um, but in addition, as we mentioned, you will be eligible for a very small group opportunity to get some interview prep. Um, Shannon will help you uh, learn kind of what we're looking for, help give you some resources um, and help with that. But then you'll also get a mini interview with me um, and just automatically you're eligible for that. Um, uh, that's an opportunity for you to share with me your career aspirations to get some additional insights from me on the specific job that you're interested in, um, as well as, you know, relay why you might be a good fit for that role. Um, attending these events is, is you know, a fantastic way. It's not the only way. Certainly, you can apply and just go into the big pool. Um, but we all are always, I mean, I'm always looking for ways that I can stand out, you know, in my roles, right? So this is a great way. It's a, a, you know, opportunity that we're creating just for you to really allow you to help stand out directly with me as the decision maker for these positions. Um, so when you, so watch your email. We will send you the dates and the times uh, for those um, and how you can be connected with us. And then of course, certainly you can also uh, connect with me through email and uh, LinkedIn as well. Um, did I answer or get to all the points you think I should make, Shannon? Perfect. Um, any final questions? I see two minutes on the clock. Um, so anything that we need to answer or it's been Jacob, super fun. To Jacob, you guys. Jacob has you a question that. from Jacob. Oh, Jacob, I now see it. I, I, how did I miss that? Jacob. Hi, Stacey. Can you share your email again? I couldn't find it in the chat. Sure. It's um, 
All of our emails are generally first name dot last name. Um, so if you look under my picture, it's for the spelling, but it's Stacy S T A C E Y uh, dot Beth B as in boy E T Z at Mercer.com. Um, I think if you go all the way to the very top of the chat too, because um, um, it was before you guys joined, um, so hopefully you can see it. But if not, I can also just put it in here again. And I've reshared it for you, Stacy. So oh, did you? It's oh, there. Yes, it's there in the chat. You got me covered, Shannon. Um, love the teamwork. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, great. I look forward to connecting with you, seeing you at the mini interview sessions. Um, I look forward to hopefully many of you joining the Mercer government team and just finding out how dynamic and engaging um, and super fun the work that we do is. Um, you'll be surprised at how cool Medicaid can be. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you Stacey. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, the Have panelists. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.